Okay, let's give this a go. I've got this real Frankenstein going on at the moment where I'm recording on my Mac, but I'm using Splashtop to control my PC, which is streaming over NDI. Yeah, it's a, it is a real Frankenstein monster here. So let's see how things go. So when you first start the application, you have a prompt to create a new database. So just give it a name. And then a choice of what database template you want. So apart from the regular fields like file name, path name, duration, channels, and a few others, it's what optional fields you want to display. So dialogue would have things like scene, take, tape. Um, music would have composer, publisher. Sound effects would have designer, effects name. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to use music and effects. So now I've got a blank database. I need to get some sounds in, so I just find my folder of sounds, drag it on. And now it's going to use as many cores as possible to just kind of plow through all of these files. Uh, this is kind of a bad example because each directory only has a few sound files in, so it can't process as fast as it possibly can. So I'm just going to cancel out of this and swap to another database. I'm going to hide that for now. So you got your uh, file name, description, duration, library. You can rearrange these just by clicking and dragging. You can resize them. There we go. You can call up the preferences to adjust the row height. So I'm just clicking and dragging, or I could use my mouse wheel. And that kind of goes for a lot of the controls inside SoundMiner. If you just use your rollover and use the mouse wheel, you can get finer detail. Um, the font height. And you can change the default font as well. That's important for countries in Asia who want to display kanji or hiragana. You need to choose a font that's uh, Unicode friendly, that has all of those characters. Otherwise, you're just going to get a whole bunch of like square rectangles anytime an invalid uh, character comes up. So that's that. You can also toggle the row height here, back and forth. That's useful when you've got something like artwork. You want to view that bigger. There we go. This doesn't have too many, too much artwork in, except for the cartoon library that's got tons. But some of these earlier ones don't. So toggle the row height back. Call up my waveform. I'll get rid of that artwork. There we go. So playback. So you can double click on a sound and it'll start playback. You can hit spacebar to start and stop. You can use your left and right arrow keys to kind of skip through the sound file. You can also click anywhere on the mini waveform to start playback at that, that point. Now, some people like it as soon as you select a record or if you're using the arrow keys, that it starts playback right away. And you can do that from here, which is autoplay. I'm going to turn that off because of the stream here. Um, there's also an option to skip silence. I don't know. Let's just browse through here, see if we've got any with lots of bits of silence in them. It's usually looking for like a digital silence. Let's have a look. This might work. Yeah. But if it was, that's what skip silence does. It just kind of skips through to the first modulation of audio. Now these things underneath, they're sort of auto-identified regions. So another key command that's useful is if you hit N on your keyboard for next, P for previous, and C to capture, you can kind of go through all of these points. So as you're playing, next, that's N, 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 P, P, C. So now a file is captured. Uh, I should talk about editing a little bit here. So you can just click, you can click and drag to mark a selection. You can use these spring markers, which allow you to zoom in, adjust, and when you release the mouse, zoom back out again. There's also, under preferences, an option under waveform to zoom to duration. So if I want to do some tight editing, let's go make it two seconds. So this shortcut key is forward slash. So I, wherever my mouse is currently like rolling over, so say this section here, I hit forward slash, 
and it will zoom me in. Forward slash again will zoom me out. Uh, it's really good for dialogue editing because you might have like, you know, 30 minutes of audio and you can just like quickly zoom in, zoom out on different portions of it. And of course, once you zoomed in, you can use this. You can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, and if you had like a tablet, I'm using right now shift and my mouse wheel just kind of scroll through. That's what that does. You've got your pitch control here. And it will transfer with that pitch. But anyway, we'll talk about some screen sets a bit more here. So let's say I like how this one is all looking. I can store it as a screen set. So under layout, I store it as number one. And then I'll choose another one without the waveform and get the row height smaller. Adjust this file name a little bit. There we go. And then I'll store this in layout number two. And you can rename these layouts too. So rename to whatever. So now it shows up as no waveform. This one has no waveform. And you can recall them here on this screen set as well. So number two, number one. And you can store them. If you hold the Alt key down and click, it will store it into that, uh, that, that screen set preset. Multiple databases, so they all show up here. And the order of them, you can set up under Preferences, Database Order. So right now, this will always be Control-1. If I want just in test to be Control-2, I can set it up. So everything above this line will just increment incrementally be number one, number two, and then everything below it will just be in alphabetical order. So that just allows you to Control-2, swap to just in test, Control-1, test DB back and forth, back and forth. So that's that. The left panel here allows you to browse, say, category for everything inside this database. Uh, you can see there's an, quite, a, quite a few. So I just bring back like Foley by clicking on it. There's food. You can see I've only got one item in food. Card effects. And if I clear this out and do the same thing for path name, I can go to, say, sound bits handwriting. And now when I open up category, you can see it's only one category, which is Foley. So I click on that. And up here, I've got the two pills. So it's telling me that I clicked on Foley and I chose sound bits handwriting. And I can remove any one of these. So if I decide, oh, I want to see what all my Foley is across my entire library, I just remove this. And there it all is. It's all my Foley items. Um, let's say I find one at random here and I'm like, oh, I want to see what else is in that folder of sounds. So it's inside sound effects sampler 2016. Okay, that's a bad example because there's going to be tons of stuff in there. So I'll go to the cartoon. Here we go. Okay, so this path name is Luke Sounds. So I could click on same folder and that will show me everything that's inside that one particular folder. Or I can roll down here and click on Luke. And there's 40 sounds inside this one folder. Or I can move up another level and see everything that's inside 10 of 24. That's 96. Or I can see everything that's inside the Slack library, which is 1,692 sound files. Um, yeah, so that's that's what the linked searches do. And they, they all sort of chain together as well. So if I do a search for whistle, it will filter my left panel. So I've got a term for whistle. And, oh, protests. Well, this is going to be somebody whistling, as opposed to a cartoon whistle. Uh, that works great, this live filtering, if your database is relatively small. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, so go to whistle again. Actually, not whistle. So it's live filtering. But if your database is big, sometimes that can really slow things down. So under Preferences, you can choose whether the left panel filters when typing. So if I turn that off now, bring everything back, clear all these terms. There we go. So it's not until I actually do a search that the left panel will filter. So that's a good little tip to know. Another one is Whenever you see this little question mark anywhere on the interface, you can click on it and it will launch your web browser and it will take you to the uh, appropriate documentation.
Okay, so on the right hand side is the metadata side panel. So for every sound file, that's showing me um, all the metadata that's associated with that sound. And I can click to rearrange these depending on what mode I'm in. Yeah, I'm not in the right mode. So there's a, a side panel, side metadata panel follows the field order. So the same way I did the database order, I could do my field order as well. So I could say, I want my category and my effects name to be always up, up at the top. That just means that when I'm choosing things, they, they show up in most of the menus up at the top. So I'll just get ahead of myself here and go to workflows. So my category and effects name should be right up at the top. And then everything else is all in alphabetical order. So because it was like that, that was, that was why the side panel wasn't allowing me to drag to rearrange. Oh, and it's still not. OK, small little bug. Anyway. You should be able to drag, be able to drag these to rearrange them in whatever order you want. See, it's good that I'm going through because uh, I've I've already found quite a few bugs that I've I've fixed just in the course of prepping for this. Even though I didn't really prep that much, to be honest, I never do. Uh, another thing you can view or click on is this. I'll just let the tooltip come up, and this is going to adjust the widths to match the metadata. So if you've got something that's really truncated like a long name. There we go, there's some. If I hit Z, that's the key command. It will automatically resize for the current record so that everything sort of fits in so you can view it. That's a useful one to have. And so that's that's pretty much the real quick overview of the the interface. There's obviously a lot more to it and I'll get into some of that I think in the the next video.